Hello, welcome to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about St. Vincent de Paul, and I have the director, Michael Caldo, here with me, one of my old friends. We've yes, been, indeed. We've been running this racket for a long time together, but uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. 31st year, and uh, at St. Vincent de Paul, every day is awesome. Uh, yeah, well, you're awesome. And We've been talking about the radio yeah, days. How yeah. long ago was that? Like, I think I, I oh, had hair then. It was a long then. time. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Days go by quickly. I know, it's Certainly awesome. Certainly in the advent of COVID-19, there's Gee. so many challenges. It seems like decades ago we were yeah. radio daying. You know, oh, but, yeah. Uh, um, you know, the mission is the same. The mission is always the same, and I know y'all do such a great right. job. I know you're persevering through this whole COVID thing. Tell us a little bit about how it's affected you guys, and I know you got the expansion. We're going to yeah. talk about that a little later. Let's 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 get on the broad generalities first, then we'll talk about the specifics. How's that? Well, I, I tell you, it's like every organization, group, or business. Uh, it, it's been very challenging. COVID-19 uh, constantly, every day challenges us, and uh, we can only put our faith into Jesus Christ because He is the only one that's going to get us through this pandemic. And sometimes you got to say He's going to get us through this day or this hour or this crisis. Or this show. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes, it did. This is a great show, great host, great message. When you say Catholic life, what a better life. You, there's not a better life you can Amen. live, Amen. you know, in, in a very true sense. And that's what we're trying to do at St. Vincent de Paul. So our strategy of serving meals inside, that went out the door in March. We're doing to-go meals. Haven't missed a meal. Um, but we've dealt with challenges with staff and other persons being exposed to viruses and having to, uh, you know, quarantine and all of these things that are a part of the new, I guess, um, a new day, reality. Yeah, yeah, a very new reality, a day that uh, you never know what turns you're going to face. Uh, so we're doing that with our dining room very successfully, serving many people that would otherwise be left out. We do have volunteers back at our dining room. Good. Um, that was going to be a question. Yeah, and uh, but we've got them all spaced out six feet, and We're everybody's all got the mat. Yeah, we are spaced <laughs> out. You know, it's a, a new uh, that has a whole that, new meaning. <laughs> yes, a new reality, new dimensions. Uh, but all again, like right. I said, centered on Christ. Right. Our, our shelters continue to stay open, providing shelter to men, women, children, families. Uh, doing a great job there, but obviously dealing with a transient population, that's been challenging. We've gone to 24 hours. Our, our women's shelter and our family shelter's always been 24 hours, but our men's facilities have not. Right. But right in early March, we said we, you know, having people come and go with COVID, that makes no strategic sense. So we went to 24 hours. So that way people have a place to quarantine, not only just to isolate, you know, yeah. and, and to distance, you know, I hear more people saying physical distancing versus social distancing, because socially we do need to stay together, Right. Um, you know, and I see that when I go to church, it's great to see people, even though we can't be close, we can't do the sign of the peace, we're still together, and, and that's a very, very powerful at thing, I'd say, no doubt. Yeah. Pharmacy continues to operate. We, well, I was going to ask you about the pharmacy, too. Yeah. You, you, you're out in front of this. This is great. Well, we, you know, I've never bought so much plexiglass in 30 oh, years. Oh, gee, I bet. You know, all our facilities getting plexiglass up was an early uh, thing we had to do, and right. we did that you know, at the pharmacy quickly. Um, we've done it at the thrift stores. Those have reopened. Uh, but special challenges uh, are all over the place. But we've dealt with them. We've served people. We've clothed people. We've sheltered people. We've provided a variety of services. Our parish ministries have made home visits virtually, through the, mostly through the telephone, but uh, other ways as well. And things are going well at St. Vincent de Paul even during a pandemic. Well, that is great. That's great. You know, um, I seem, it might just be my imagination, but I seem to see a lot more people on the street corners. You know, is it, is it, is it, I, I think, is, is it, is it really something that's going on or is, 
What do you think? Well, I mean, are you seeing it? I mean, well, well, I haven't seen it recently, but I've got to be honest. I drive from work to home to work oh, to okay. home every well, day. Well, you see, I have to go all the way to Gonzales so, every day, and I live in Baton Rouge. So there, there are. I know that prior to the pandemic, what you just described, there was an explosion. Oh. And so, with the increase of uh, you know mental health challenges and addictions, and you look around the entire country, homelessness is on the rise. And so with COVID, it has changed things a bit. Mm -hmm. We try to get people off the street early. The Louisiana Housing Corporation also, they have a motel program where they house a lot of homeless individuals. But there are a lot of individuals that don't want four walls mm -hmm. and want to be on the outside. And maybe it's claustrophobic or maybe some mental ailment that's really challenging mm -hmm. them to be inside. But that's probably what you're seeing. Okay. My hope and desire is that uh, uh, as this crisis kind of hopefully uh, eases up a bit and we get back to normalcy, that we'll be able to do better outreach efforts. On a normal basis, we're doing constant outreach efforts. Since March, we have done outreach efforts and we've done them not only at the St. Vincent de Paul camp campus, but Segan Lane and throughout the area. Right. Uh, but those have become more and more challenging mm -hmm. just to do due to the con, uh, you know, just due to contact and COVID and all of the necessities that that requires of right. us. So um, our reality was that when we first, you know, we had mass that one Sunday where the bishop had said, no sign of peace, no receiving on the tongue. But we were at mass together. Right, we were. You know, the next day, Monday, I'm at work, right. and we get word from the bishop that everything is, you know, the, the governor has basically shut down the state, mm -hmm. and we had we have a pretty big food distribution operation at St. Teresa. Right. You know, it's a, it's a it's a big part of what we do, and we had to back up and say, okay, well, most of our volunteers are retired. They we can't have them come in. Right. There's, they're, they're in that category of, of people that um, um, are susceptible, you know, and critically susceptible right. in some places. So, so we basically shut down. Right. Because we didn't know what else to do. Right. And we just said, boom, that's it. Well, immediately we just started getting calls. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we sent everybody home, cause it, we, but, but I had to come to work, and Father right. had to come to work. Yeah. And, we and we're getting calls, and people, um, you know, warning, can they pick up their food on Wednesday? No, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden. Then, as a couple of weeks went by, we were getting a sense that people were hungry. Right. I mean, these people were mm -hmm. running out of food in their houses. Right. Some of them had kids, grandkids, right. and all that. And so we had to back up and say, well, what are we going to do? So what we did for the first Wednesday was we opened, Everything we had mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. we opened, we, we spent the staff, we brought mm -hmm. our staff in, no mm -hmm. volunteers, mm -hmm. and we bagged everything for everybody. Yeah. And then the next day, the staff and a few nights at Columbus Helpers, mm -hmm. 200 families came by and got several bags of food. And we basically depleted what we had in the pantry. Now we did have some stuff mm -hmm. in storage and you know, we had to get mm -hmm. it out. And, and all of a sudden we said, well, let, let's reactivate. Yes. Well, that has been the new norm. Yes. You know, we have to get everybody tested. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, everybody's got to wear their mask, yes. you know, all this kind of stuff. And, and, and it, it's a bear, but you know what it's done? We've got new volunteers that are younger. Yeah, that's great. And, and that is great. We've seen that as well. Have you and seen that? Yeah. We have seen that. And we've experienced that. And uh, I think uh, that for St. Vincent de Paul, we rely on 1,500 volunteers every month. And so for us to do you our work. You want to loan work, us some? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, just kidding. And, but We're just, good. <laughs> and, and, and just like your situation, there are, many of them are older and retired. So yeah. they're at high risk situations. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, so we've had to do the same kind of similar thing and kind of at, you know, the first couple of months, just no volunteers and then kind of slowly strategically bring people in. You know, right. we couldn't do our Easter basket event that we do every Easter, um, but we delayed it and we're doing it in July this year. So, you know, July is, uh, 
uh, Easter in July is something that I never heard of, but this year it happened. And uh, that's because <laughs> we had all these Easter baskets back in April. What do you do? You want to reach kids. So we just delayed it till we felt it was a safe time. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we, uh, um, you know, where you are, you have such a huge population that you, you have to deal with. You know, yes. my reality is different. We just have one, you know, one parish, a couple of parishes, but, but we just have a smaller group. But I can't imagine all oh, you have to 1,500 people. How do you it, it, track it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's always it, it's always a challenge. Um, and I think another part of the new reality is once the pandemic is gone, and we're dealing with. Uh, the, pa the way we used to do things a little bit in the past, that's going to be our challenge is how to re-engage everyone, how to do it efficiently, effect effectively, and strategically, put us in a position to achieve our mission because it's not going to be easy, I think. Yeah, uh, and I think we're all there, uh, Michael, because even mass, how are we going to re-engage mass? I, I agree. You it's it's I mean, going to be a challenge. You know, we've you got know? so many people that are... Um, um, not used to going to Mass now. They're watching it on TV or whatever they're right. doing. You know, how are they going to come back? Well, although I love all the use of technology, all the parishes that I've seen, the streaming, I think that's super terrific. But I love being in the church, you know. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think... Um, I think for us, all of us Catholics, our goal is to get together again, see one another, and hopefully we're all faced with an explosion of people. And receive the and, Eucharist. And every Sunday <laughs> is going to be Christmas, you know? Yeah, Wouldn't that be great? That would be good. I mean, because sometimes you don't appreciate something until it's taken away. Oh, you know? amen. LSU baseball, I mean, that's little stuff compared with the spiritual side of things, no doubt. But from the standpoint of uh, football and all that, um, you know, it's still something that you really appreciate. Amen. Um, we're going to take a break in about a 30 seconds or so. When we'll come back, we'll talk about support and funding and all the, the gory details. And we'll also talk about the building. Okay? Sounds great. We're talking to Michael Acaldo, the director of uh, St. Vincent de Paul here in Baton Rouge, and we're talking about, we have been talking about COVID. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about beyond the COVID and, and how you can help uh, the society and what you can do to help and, and what we, our prospects are moving forward. So uh, we'll take a short break, and after that, we'll be right back with Michael Acaldo. Stay with us. We'll be right back. by the front door Don't forget the keys under the mat When childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Don't expect a free ride from no one Don't hold a grudge or a chip And here's why Bitterness keeps you from flying Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie I know you got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind When the dreams you're dreaming come to you 
welcome back to Catholic Life. We're kind of laughing because we were talking about life, and then I said, afterlife. <laughs> That's our we goal. All, we all got a little chuckle out of it. <laughs> no doubt about it, because we need Jesus. Amen. And uh, we, we want to see him now. And uh, uh, that afterlife, I tell you, this Amen. pandemic, it's been kind of like a, a, yeah. a, a kind of, but it's nothing like heaven, I can tell you. Amen. It's the opposite. You know? I hear Father Eric often say, man, why don't he just take me now? I'm ready to go home. You know, I want to see my mom and dad. You yeah, know? I, look. And we got I, work to do in the meantime. That we do. And as you know, modern day disciples, we got to carry his cross and do Amen. what we can to, to, to really fill the, the world up with love. I think that's one thing that uh, the world needs more than ever. We talked about all the things we're doing dealing with the COVID-19, but uh, that's the most important part of our mission. Amen. We're talking to Michael Caldo, who is the director of St. Vincent de Paul. And uh, in the last segment, we talked about all the hiccups we had to go through, uh, to put it mildly, with the COVID. Let's, let's talk about uh, the expansion of the building. It just finished right before COVID. You couldn't even cut the ribbon. That's right. Tell us a little bit about uh, the building and it, what happened. It's a beautiful building. You know, we got a $1.2 million grant to build it from the city and the state. And just a beautiful facility. It's uh, different than the other facilities, although it's attached to our main day shelter, night shelter facility. It is just uh, architecturally, it's different. Um, it's got its own separate generator. Uh, it's primarily going to be used as a day center, and we've used it a little bit as such. Uh, COVID has kind of made us kind of make sure we secure things, make sure things are safe, so we haven't been able to utilize it to its fullest extent. But then it also is going to serve as a response to tropical storms, hurricanes, freeze nights. Right. So we're going to be able to put in uh, cots, uh, a total of 36. Right now, under COVID uh, protections, only 18. We've got to get those beds 10 feet apart. But, you know, I, I think from our standpoint, it's uh, going to be something that impacts the community for many days and years to come. And I think from our standpoint, I think everyone needs to take a deep breath. Like we have organizationally, you know, it's been rough. Donations are, are tough, although people are being very generous, but their, in, their financial well-being's been impacted. So it's impacting their ability to give. And so that's very, very challenging right now. And, and I think though, everybody needs to remember that because the way it ties into this new facility is that Economically, we've got to realize that at some point, people are going to begin to be evicted. The evictions will continue through not only 2020, probably through 2021. Right. People, they're not going to be employed. And how long the employment benefits last into 2021, who knows? Um, so there are a lot of challenges. And so there are going to be a lot of people in need of St. Vincent de Paul for shelter. Uh, for things and services that we provide, prescription medicines, you name it. It's all the basic life things that mm -hmm. St. Vincent de Paul, the church does for those who are truly in need. I mean, uh, Christ's missions was always about the vulnerable, those who truly needed a helping hand, right. needed to feel Christ's love. And uh, that's what St. Vincent de Paul does. That is what uh, the church does in such an, a remarkable fashion. I talked about the, the world needs love, the world needs the church as its primary way of getting that love out. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, this new shelter will do just that. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you said that we, the world needs love, you know, in one of the scriptures it says God is love. It, that's you know, it. And so what they need is they need God. That's you know? it. And we give them God through the way we love them. Without and, doubt. And bring them to the Lord in, in, that, in that way without, you know, forcing it upon them. We just open our arms, not right now, and hug them <laughs> and, uh, and, and show them love. And then they see God through us. Without a doubt, and what you described at St. Teresa is exactly what happened. You know, y'all got everything you got to be dealing with as a parish to continue all the ministries, but the priority was people needed food. Right. We came to your attention, you got them food, and that's the same way at St. Vincent. It's just do what you can, do the best you can, realize that 
you know, only God's going to get you through what you face. And you can do, God can do everything for everybody. We can, but we can do our best. And when we do our best, that's what that love and that hope and compassion uh, that's so important in today's yeah. world. It, and, and, you know, um, you mentioned people maybe will be out of their job or, you know, all the hiccups that we're going to experience potentially down the road. You know, um, what, what we're seeing in our parish, and I'm sure you are too, is uh, people that can step up beyond what they used to do mm -hmm. and are kind of making up for the difference for the people that couldn't. Yes. You know, and so like what I, when I talk to people about it, I say, look, don't do more than you can, right. but do as much as you can. Right. That's you know? it. You know, because some people can't do what they used to do. Right. And we got, we got to continue the ministry. We got to continue to be, to be Christ in the world. Without a doubt. That's our goal. And that's what we have to focus upon because without it, um, there isn't going to be a response to uh, uh, those who are suffering, those who are in need. And if they don't feel Christ's love through us, if we're not um, doing it in the best way we can and to maybe do it one more step, no matter what we've got on our back. Uh, we talked about in the first segment about taking things for granted. My goodness, I think we all... Not have, anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> There's such a long list of everyday things that we right. we really took for granted. And, and in a way, it's kind of like we all need to do an inventory of blessings in our lives and, and kind of list them and uh, be thankful for what we do have now and what I, we I'll do I'll give later. you an example of one. The air that we breathe. Yes, indeed. We take it for granted until That's you have it. to cover up that's exactly and it's right. harder to breathe. Just just the air that we breathe. That's right. You know, every every part of our life, mm -hmm. um, it's forced us to realize mm -hmm. how valuable all the parts of our life are. That is very and, much and, so. and and for you guys at Saint and ladies at Saint Vincent de Paul, y'all have such a, a vibrant ministry. You can just it bubbles with life and love right. on mm -hmm. a and right now. I'm sure that it's just an effort to keep that going it is. through all of this. It, 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 it really is. And I, I think when you've got a major uh, $1 million project on going on your property and you've got all this stuff and it happens like this, and every day you walk through the door, there's something new, you know, that you've got to kind of, you know, deal with. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Uniforms for Kids is not only a July type thing, but it's all year long type thing. A lot of people don't realize that we give out uniforms to needy school kids throughout the school year. Um, you know, we've had to adapt and shift with that effort this mm -hmm. year. Right. We, we're having to adapt and shift with a lot of things. We got an effort right now to build a new chapel. We've got six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go on that new, new. We've got it in the bank to spend on that project. So, so much to do. Right. Um, let's talk about the uniforms. Um, families. Mm -hmm. When you say uniforms for kids, it's not just the kids; it's the families. A lot of these families are struggling because, um, you know, they 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 don't they have some money right now because of the benefits. Mm -hmm. but they have no hope for the future when they run out. Right. You know, and school's going to come. Right. They don't know how to get the uniforms. That's where y'all stand in the gap. Yes. That's when our viewers can help you stand in the gap. And that's when, you know, like I said before, um, don't give if you can't, but, get, you know, but give what you can. And, and to the, help, the extent that you can help the ministry right. at St. Vincent de Paul, that's the kind of things that it takes care of. Right, it, it does. It makes a difference. One, per, one child at a time, but as you said, it's a whole family. and We're all children of God, and so in a very, very true sense, somebody commits uh, to St. Vincent de Paul and invests in what we do, it helps us to bring that ministry to life for those who truly need it. Right. And like you said, you said so eloquently earlier, you know, God is love, and we, our job is to bring love and God to those who truly need absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so all of this works together in a way that we all can buy into it. Right. And, th and that's really what we all have to do as individuals. So, right. so from, from my perspective, like I'm almost, you know, I'm, in a, I'm not in your ministry, but I am in your ministry. I do it oh, at yeah. a church level. So I have to tell people, look, we're going to persevere. 
right. persevere with us. Yes. <laughs> you know, persevere through the hope that yes. we can get through it, that yes. when we get through it, we're going we're gonna to hit the ground running and be better off because we went through it. That's exactly right. And, and that, that if for, I think, anyone that's involved in ministry now, it wasn't, at least I think this is to Paul, wasn't, are we going to continue? How are we going to continue? Right. And when you get those bumps in the road, which uh, we're used to driving on some bumpy roads in Louisiana, well, COVID-19, <laughs> this, has been a yeah, this has been like, <laughs> makes Louisiana roads look, look so smooth. smooth. <laughs> but, but with all that said, um, right. in all seriousness, we, we just got to navigate it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when you're navigating something, and you're doing it with uh, not only a mask on, but kind of like with a blindfold on. You just got to reach up to the Lord, grab his hand, and let him lead you. Because uh, when you forget who's in charge, that's where you make the biggest mistake. And, 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 and Jesus is in charge, and he's here with us, and we just got to listen to him. He's talking to every one of us. He may not speak in a voice. I haven't been blessed to hear the Lord directly, but he's talking to me all the time. And I think uh, if we open our ears and we grow spiritually, we, you know, that's what I've heard a lot of people share with me, our volunteers especially. They've grown spiritually so much over this last several months that we've been in COVID-19. Um, and it's helped them. And they're, although they're not thankful for all the things they're missing out on, they are thankful that their relationship with Christ has grown immensely. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they may not be able to go to church because of their age and an underlying health condition, but my goodness, they miss that gift of being able to go and being part of the celebration of the Eucharist. So, I mean, from that standpoint, it's just a powerful thing for me to witness and uh, to share with other St. Vincent de Paul members. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm um, just about out of time. We get, we get on a roll and we run out of time. But, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, we, we've been talking about St. Vincent de Paul, and to the extent that you can um, uh, assist uh, Michael and his folks in uh, continuing to, pr to press forward through the virus to the other side so that when we get to the other side, we can, we can be what we were yes. again. Yes. You know? And uh, to the extent you can help with that, it will be much appreciated. Give them the website and the phone number real SVDPBR quick. SVDPBR.org, and uh, that's St. Vincent de Paul, Baton Rouge.org, and you at 383 and you can apply for assistance if you're out there and you need some help, not only giving, but assistance. You can do so on the website or by phone. Same Friday. thing. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching today. We've been talking about what we can do to help a, a great ministry, and uh, we pre Appreciate Michael uh, Caldo so much. He's one of our old friends and one of our standby guests. So uh, uh, thank you for being with us again. Thank you. And, and uh, thank you for watching. Until next time, God bless everybody. Take care.